Question 22 onwards is from chapter 8. The noble gases are in group 8 of the periodic table. Some properties of the first four noble gases are shown. Which row identifies the trends in boiling point and in density as group 8 is descended? As we move down group 8, we can see that the boiling point is increasing and the density is getting bigger that means it's also increasing. So the answer is B. Question 23. Some properties of element R are shown. In which part of the periodic table is R found? It has a high melting point and boiling point, and when reacted with cold water, it gives off hydrogen gas. When reacted with oxygen, it gives to burn a white solid. The chemical property of group 1 says that it has high melting and boiling point, and it can react with cold water to give hydrogen gas. So the answer is A. Question 24. Which pair of compounds show that transition elements have variable oxidation states? So let's compare the first one. The compound of Cr2O3 means that the oxidation number of oxygen was negative 2 and chromium was 3 plus. And we'll repeat the same steps for CrBr3. 3 brought up here is 3 plus, there is no number here so this will be negative 1. The transition element here is chromium and both of them have the oxidation number of 3 plus. We'll repeat the same step and the transition element of copper, both of them will get 2 plus. Except for option C, the iron is a transition element, one has the oxidation number of 3 plus and the other 2 plus. So the answer is C. Question 25 onwards is from chapter 9. The list gives off order of some metals and hydrogen in the reactivity series. Metal X is also included. You have metal X in between hydrogen and copper. Which row shows the properties of metal X? Reacts with dilute acids. Acid has hydrogen atoms. So let me just put Z. It could be HCl, H2SO4 or HNO3. Reacting with X. Well, X is at the bottom of hydrogen, this means that it cannot displace X, so there will be no reaction over here. Next, we're going to see if metal X oxide can be reduced by carbon. So, X oxide reacting with carbon. Carbon atom can be found in between potassium and magnesium. So, carbon atom is more reactive than element X, meaning that it can displace element X, so therefore there will be a reaction. The answer is B. Question 26. When zinc is added to an aqueous solution containing magnesium ions, there is no reaction. Which species has the greatest tendency to lose electron? An atom will only lose electron when it's trying to become stable. Mg2 plus and zinc2 plus is an ion which has already lost an electron. Therefore, they are stable and they will not lose any more electrons. And here we've got magnesium and another element meaning that magnesium has lost electron to combine with another element. So the answer is A. Question 27. Which gas in the air is needed for iron to rust? This question is pretty direct. The answer will be oxygen. For rust to take place, there must be presence of water and oxygen. Question 28. Which coating prevents iron from rusting even when the coating is damaged? In your syllabus, you will learn a few rust prevention methods whereby rust can be prevented by coating iron with a barrier like paint or grease or even plastic. But the problem with this is that if the barrier is damaged, then the iron will still end up rusting. So these options are not the answer. So what we can do is use a more reactive metal than iron, for example, a zinc, to prevent the iron from rusting. This method is identified as galvanizing or sacrificial protection. Question 29. Why is limestone added to the blast furnace? This is one of the steps that is taken place from the extraction of hematite. Limestone is also known as calcium carbonate, whereby it is added into the furnace to remove impurities in the ore. So the calcium carbonate will first decompose to form calcium oxide, and then the calcium oxide that is formed will react with silicon dioxide, which is an impurity in the iron ore, to form slag. So it reacts with impurities to form slag. The answer is B. Question 30 onwards is from chapter 10. The flowchart shows stages in the treatment of river water to produce drinking water. What occurs at stages J and K? As long as you're familiar with the syllabus, you should be able to answer this easily. If you haven't done enough revision on your syllabus, you can always refer to your course specification. Make sure you're referring to the right examinations. This is for 2023 to 2025. Make sure to print this out and use it as a checklist for your revision 
see what are the topics that you have already covered. You could put a tick on it and the ones that you haven't covered, you can circle them and come back to revise whenever you have the time. So under chapter 10, you will see that they have already mentioned to you that you must know the treatment of the domestic water supply in terms of sedimentation, filtration, addition of carbon, and chlorination. So after the step of sedimentation, you are going to filtrate to remove solids. So at stage J, it's filtration. And after filtration, you'll use carbon to remove the taste and odor and then it will be chlorination. So the answer here is C. Question 31. Carbon dioxide acts as a greenhouse gas by interacting with a particular type of energy that radiates from the Earth's surface into the atmosphere. Which type of energy is involved and what happens when this energy interacts with the carbon dioxide molecules? So we are discussing on greenhouse gas. Under 10.3, you will learn how the greenhouse gases causes global warming, whereby it happens from the emission of thermal energy. So the type of energy involved is thermal energy. And what happens is that this will reduce the thermal energy loss to space. This says that it increases the energy loss to space. It's wrong. It reduces the loss of energy in space by absorbing the energy. So the answer is B. Question 32. Oxides of nitrogen, such as nitrogen oxide and nitrogen dioxide, are formed in the petrol engines of cars. They are removed from the exhaust gases by reaction in the car's catalytic converter. Which rule describes how oxides of nitrogen are formed in a petrol engine and a reaction that happens in the catalytic converter? Oxides of nitrogen are usually formed from the reaction of nitrogen and the oxygen molecules from the air in the presence of heat. And next, what happens in the catalytic converter? You can find this in your course specification under 10.3. It's carbon dioxide reacting with nitrogen oxide forming carbon dioxide which is safe to release compared to carbon monoxide which is a toxic gas. So the answer here is E. Question 33 onwards is from chapter 11. Which diagram shows the displayed formula for the named organic compound? Ethanoic acid has a functional group of COOH and this here shows a functional group of COO and another extra OH. So this is wrong. Ethene is alkene that consists of double bond. One carbon atom can only have a maximum of four bonds and we can see that over here it has five bonds. So this is also wrong. Next, ethanol has a functional group of OH. Ethanol means this has two carbons. So yes, you have two carbons. Each carbon has four atoms of hydrogen, also over here. So this is correct. And next is methane, which is an alkene. But it says methane here. So this is one carbon alkene and we have two here. So this is wrong. The answer is C. What is the total number of covalent bonds in a molecule of butane? Hereby is the structural formula of C4H10. So the total number of bonds is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So the answer is C. Next, propane reacts with chlorine in a substitution reaction. Which reaction condition is required for the reaction to occur? Propane is a compound from the homologous series of an alkene. Alkenes cannot go through addition process, so it will go through a substitution process. And the condition required is the presence of ultraviolet light. Question 36. The structure of an organic compound is shown. There is an OH here. This means that this is an alcohol. There are three C here. That means this is a three carbon alcohol. So it must be starting with a prop. So it's propanol. Which structure represents a molecule that reacts with steam to produce this product? So we are looking to find which element that has reacted with steam, which is water, to produce propanol. This process is called hydration. And in hydration, only alkene will react with water to produce an alcohol. Since the alcohol is propanol, a 3-carbon alcohol, it means that it will also be a 3-carbon alkene. This here has double bonds, so it's an alkene and it has three carbons, so the answer is D. Question 37. Which term describes a nylon? Under organic chemistry, you will learn about polymers. And polymers can be formed by two methods. One is addition and the other is condensation. Addition polymers are formed by joining up many monomers. So when form a polymer, it will for instance form polyalkene, depending on which alkene you use. 
Now, for condensation polymers, they are formed with two different monomers that are linked together with the removal of water. So, you will learn two condensation polymers. One is forming polyamide and the other is by forming polyester. Polyamide is also known to be as a nylon and polyester can also be identified as PET. So, nylon here is a polyamide. Question 38. Ethene can be polymerized. Which diagram represents the structure of the product form? When an alkene is polymerized, it undergoes the process of addition. So how we can deduce this is, a multiple numbers of ethene will be added up together by breaking its bond. So now you'll have single bonds on the outside. And depending on the number that you add, you're going to get a polyethene. So the answer is C. The last two questions are from chapter 12. An acid-based titration is described. 25 cm cube of dilute aqueous alkali is put in a conical flask. Indicator is added. Dilute acid is added. And then volume of acid use is then recorded. Which use of apparatus is correct? When measuring volume for liquids, it can be determined by using a several types of apparatus depending on the level of accuracy needed. For instance, a burette are the most accurate way of measuring a variable volume of liquid between 0 cm3 to 50 cm3, typically in the process of a titration. And volumetric pipettes are the most accurate way of measuring a fixed volume of liquid between 10 cm3 to 25 cm3. So we've got 25 cm3 of alkali here and we are indeed going to measure it by using a volumetric pipette. So the answer here is A. Question 40. Substance Q is investigated using chromatography. The chromatogram is shown. The diagram is not drawn to scale. What is the RF value of Q? So RF here is the retention factor value that we are looking for. To do this, we can use the formula. Distance traveled by substance over the distance traveled by solvent. So this is the solvent front and as you can see, we will take the measurement from the baseline. So from here to here, will be 114 millimeters take away that will be 101 millimeters so the distance traveled by the solvent is 101 millimeters we're looking to find rf value of q so again we'll find the distance from the baseline to where q stopped which is over here it will be 83 millimeters take away 13 millimeters that will be 70 millimeters so just use your calculator and you will get 0.69 so the answer is C. Alright, that's all for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. For the next video, I will be discussing about biology paper 2 from October-November 2023. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.